friends welcome back to the channel today's video we are talking through all of the top things that i recommend you do while you're in salem massachusetts brendan and i went to salem last year right before the busy season we went in late september i think our trip maybe transitioned into early october i can't 100 percent remember off the top of my head but we had the best time. It was so much fun and I would 100% go again because there are a couple things and I am going to talk about them here that I wish I'd done, but we never got around to doing. So I'll have to save them for next trip. So let's get into it. Okay, my top recommendation is the Voodoo's Vampires and Ghosts Tour by Spellbound Tours. I cannot remember the name of the person that we had, but he was awesome. This was about a two hour guided walking tour at night. We went all around Salem. We heard the ghost stories there. We heard a history of vampires in Salem, voodoo in Salem. We like talked so much about ghosts, haunted happenings. He showed us real evidence of ghosts. It was so cool. You cannot film during this walking tour, so I don't have any footage of it, but I highly recommend. I absolutely loved this tour. Next up is kind of the quintessential thing to do in Salem. If you look up what to do in Salem, this is going to be the first thing that pops up and that is the Salem Witch Museum. I will say this I had really high hopes for because it is kind of like the main Salem Witch Trials attraction of Salem, but I actually didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed other things. I still think it's a must do, especially if you're only going to Salem one time because it is really cool. And like, again, it's like the quintessential thing to do in Salem. And it has a lot of good information about the history of the witch trials and how we can prevent things like that from happening in the future. But um, again, you cannot film in there. Um, there are a lot of places where filming or pictures are prohibited. So do keep that in mind. Um, but I did really enjoy it. But if I went back, I don't know if I would make it as much of a priority. It is a little bit of a hassle. It does sell out. So you've got to make sure that you're online and you grab your tickets, especially if you're going during the busy season, that mid to late October time frame. You've got to show up on time and, you know, all that good stuff. So um, it, I definitely say do it if it's a once in a lifetime trip to Salem. But if you're going to be back, you know, once every year, every couple of years, I wouldn't say like it's a can't miss. Now, one thing that I really, really enjoyed, which I feel like other people might not enjoy as much is the witch house. So the witch house, I believe is like the oldest standing house. Let me get my facts right. Hold on. Let me just double check myself before I say something incorrect. Okay, so this is the Jonathan Corwin House in Salem, Massachusetts, known as the Witch House. It was the home of Judge Jonathan Corwin and is the only structure you can visit in Salem with direct ties to the Salem Witch Trials of 1692. The little description on their website says, tours of the Corwin House, now known as the Witch House, connect elements of everyday life with the events punctuating history's timelines. Through examination of family life, architecture, and furniture of the 17th century, visitors gain a deeper comprehension of the people involved in the witch trials and an enriched understanding of America's colonial heritage. So um, once again, these are um, hard to get tickets for if you're going in the busy season. That's why I highly recommend right before it goes because a lot of the Halloween stuff is already up, but you don't have like the can't move crowds that Salem does get um, in mid to late October. So um, I really loved this tour. It was really cool to see how so many different things affected daily life, um, not only in the, you know, colonial days, but in Salem specifically. Um, and it's really cool that you're standing in a structure that someone who judged which trial verdicts lived in. Like that is so crazy. So I really, really enjoyed it. Once again, you cannot take pictures and videos in this um, space. So uh, do be mindful and respectful of that um, just because there's a lot of old stuff that flash photography can actually hurt. So um, definitely be mindful of that when you're in Salem and make sure that you're respecting those rules. Next up is something that I wish I'd done, but I didn't actually get around to doing. And that is the Witch Dungeon Museum. This is a museum dedicated to the Witch Dungeons where... Um, you know, people were held await while they were awaiting um, trial or verdict or whatever for their witch 
trial. <laughs> um, and so it kind of talks about that. Again, I can't speak to it heavily because I actually haven't been there, but next time I go, it is a top priority for me to make sure I make it there. The other spot I really wish that I'd made it to, made it to was the Pioneer Village. Now this is not in Salem. It's a little bit outside of Salem. So it's not, I think, I mean, you probably could walk there, but I think it would take you like a while. I don't remember exactly how far from Salem is. Salem it is, but it's not like a quick walk down the road like most of this is. Um, I think we only took one Uber the entire time we were in Salem and it was literally to and from the airport in Boston. So Salem is a very walkable city. I just think this specific activity is not. So it says that the Pioneer Village was built in 1930 to mark the tercentennial of Massachusetts. Pioneer Village is America's first living history museum. The village sits on three acres of land and contains various examples of colonial architecture, dugouts, wigwams, 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 right? Um, thatched roof cottages and the governor's fair house, culinary med medicinal gardens and a blacksmith's shop further interpret early 17th century colonial life. Admission is only $5, but they are only open su Saturdays and Sundays through October. It, that's what it says on here for 2022. So make sure you are mindful of that. I think now that's why we didn't go. I don't think we were there when they were actually open because we were only there for a couple of days. And I don't think they were open while we were there. Um, but definitely something I would check out next Next time. Next up, let's talk Hocus Pocus. So there are many spots where you can see where different um, sections of Hocus Pocus were filmed. First of all, the town hall where the town hall party scene takes place. Definitely recommend using that for a photo op because that's super fun. I would say the most relaxing and enjoyable area is the Salem Commons, especially around October. They put like festival stuff out there and it's super cute. Um, but I just enjoyed honestly kind of grabbing like a coffee and whatever and just sitting on the benches out there and just kind of enjoying the fall weather. Their school is also right there next to Salem Commons as well so you can get a picture there. Um, and then obviously you can go visit Allison's house which is not too far from the Salem Witch Museum. Um, that is the, is it the same thing as the Ropes Mansion? Hold on, hold on, I need to get my facts straight. Yes, that is the Ropes Mansion, and there's a garden behind there that you can tour through, which is also really pretty. So definitely go visit Allison's house. You can also visit Max and Danny's house. Um, you'll have to look up the address for this online. Um, I know that it's posted places, but please keep in mind that this is someone's actual home. So just be respectful and making sure you are not crossing over onto their property. You're taking pictures, you know, out on the street from a distance um, and just be mindful that people do live there. Okay, we've got three more quick little spots that I want to make sure you make it to. First off is the Nightmare Gallery, which is filled with life-sized replica creatures from different horror and Halloween movies. It is very cool, I will say. It does not take you very long to walk through this little museum. I think Brendan and I spent maybe 20 or 30 minutes in there. You can definitely take your time and go a little bit slower. We're just faster moving people, um, but it is really cool. Definitely a highly recommend thing, and again, this can be really hard to get into. The line might be really, really crazy. So make sure that you, um, you know, plan to wait for a little while before you get in if you're there during the busy season. And two more spots. And these spots are not, they are as touristy, but they're more history filled, et cetera, if that makes sense. So first is the Salem Witch Trials Memorial. This has a little bench for every victim of the Salem Witch Trials. And um, there's a graveyard also near that that is very old. And I really enjoyed walking through it, but I will say that it is very sad. It's not a place that is like, oh, this is so cool. It's really sad to think about the fact that these people were essentially murdered for literally nothing. Um, and it does have a very solemn feel around it. So just something to keep in mind, but I will say it was very, um, interesting and, um, I enjoyed walking around and seeing all the benches and just taking time to think about the people that were victims in the Salem witch trials. Next up, similar thing, Proctor's Ledge. So I think there's, there's some 
mystery surrounding Proctor's Ledge. If you know more information, let me know in the comments below. But apparently there's Proctor Ledge, Proctor's Ledge, the memorial, but then there's a different Proctor's Ledge that they are very secretive about the actual location of because things that are not good happen there quite often, which is not surprising. Proctor's Ledge is said to be where people were hanged during the witch trials. Um, essentially every person during the witch trials was hanged except for one person was pressed to death which means they piled rocks on top of him until he passed away which is crazy what um but most people were hanged and proctor's ledge is where i think most or if not all of those hangings happened and so they say that there's two different locations the proctor's ledge that you can easily find that like address to and go online is a little bit outside of like kind of the downtown salem area but the walk to it is very pretty lots of historical homes especially if you go in late september early october they're decorated for halloween so it's a very beautiful and scenic walk um but it's kind of random it's like a random memorial and there's like a house like a normal house across the street a normal house right next to it i think there's like a gas station like it's just kind of like this random spot in the middle of basically a neighborhood uh where this memorial is so this is where they say that this happened and so they built a memorial here and you'll see people leave things um you know at the memorial like uh coins and um pictures sometimes and candles and flowers and stuff like that um but then you know there's i've heard some stuff i'm not a salem expert so i can't speak to it enough but they say that there's a different location that's actually proctor's ledge and they're so keen on keeping that location under wraps because apparently a lot of bad things happen there they recommend not going there at night um, and I will say that you're not allowed at the Proctor's Ledge Memorial at night. Um, it closes after dusk. So that's something to keep in mind. And again, I think it's just because they don't want weird, spooky, disrespectful things happening. So yeah, that are those are all the things that I would recommend you do in Salem, Massachusetts, especially if you're visiting during September, October timeframe. Um, I definitely, again, highly recommend going late September, early October before the crowds really pick up. It is so much fun. Make sure you spend lots of time on Essex Street shopping around. There are so many cute shops in Salem. You can get all of your witch stuff. You can get your palm read. You can get your fortune told. You can get a tarot reading. You can buy Halloween um, themed clothing and spooky, gothic, witchy, everything, makeup. Like they just have everything. So make sure you plan tons of time just to walk in and out of shops all around Salem because there's tons of cute stuff. There's also a lot of great food around Salem. So make sure you plan plenty of time to walk around and do all the spooky things, especially these top ones that I mentioned. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and hit that big red subscribe button down below to come hang out with me every single day until Halloween. I will be here to make spooky content for you and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.